In this Ruby tutorial, we are going to walk through how we can use the new Ruby dig method. Now, the dig method provides a really nice interface for being able to go in and to parse and tra to traverse hashes or hash-like data. So we're going to walk through a couple examples here. I'm going to start off by creating a user hash. So this is going to have a user with a name, and then it's also going to have a nested hash called favorites and inside of favorites we'll have food and then we'll also have movies and so that is going to be exactly what we need in order to parse the data now we're going to walk through kind of the older way of doing this this is going to be using the bracket syntax so if i say user and then from there say name then I'm able to get access to that username right here. And as you can see, now it says Christine. And if I wanted to use some, a nested hash, so if I wanted to say favorites and then find out her, her favorite food, just like this, then I could run it and you can see it returns pizza. And that all works perfectly fine. But now the dig method gives us a different interface. So I'm gonna get rid of this and I can say user and then call the dig method and then pass in what I'm looking for. So here I can say name and now this will return Christine. Now, it also gives me a great way of grabbing the nested values. You can simply pass additional arguments to the dig method. So here I can say user, dig, and then we'll say favorites, and then movies, just like this. And now if I call this, this is going to return Fiddler on the roof, just like we'd expect. Now, if you want to access or if you try to access something that doesn't exist, so if I call and I say that this is going to be something else, let me clear all of our current output. And what this is going to do is this is just going to return nil. And so that is something that is very important to understand with the dig method is you have to be careful to make sure what kind of value you're trying to access. So for example, if I went to favorites and I did have a key here called something else and it was set to nil by default, then you're going to run into something a little bit confusing here because you're going to get nil for both cases. So you're going to get nil if the value or if the key doesn't exist, but if the value happens to be nil, you'll also get nil. So that is an edge case you really need to be careful with. And so that I just wanted to kind of add that as a caveat. That is one of the only issues that, uh, that you'd run into in following this approach. But there are many times where you would want this to fail softly or you don't really care if the key exists or not. You simply want to see if the value is there. If it is, then you want to do something with it. So this is how you can use a hash, and I'm going to just get rid of this. I'll include it in the show notes, though, so you can access the code. And I want to show you the second example, which is going to be showing how we can work with the YAML data structure. So this is a very common approach for using the dig method as well. Right here, I have a config.yaml file. It has a secret key. It has a production, a nested YAML production key with AWS inside of that, and then a development one. This, as you may have noticed, this looks very similar to the Rails encrypted keys file, and that's on purpose because I wanted to show you how you could use these together. So right here we have one item that's nested, and then or two items that are nested, and then one that is not. And I'll show you how we can actually access YAML data using dig. So I'm going to switch back to this file and then close that out. And now what I want to do is I first want to require the YAML library. And then from there, we need to pull in the file. So I'm going to store the contents of the file in a variable called config. And we'll say yaml.load file. And then the file is called config.yaml. And now if I output this, so if I say config inspect, 
then this is just going to give me the YAML file just like this, the secret key and all of those different values. So now let's see how we can actually access these using dig. So I can say config.dig and then from there I can't pass in a symbol I need because I'm working with YAML so I need to pass it in as a string. So I can just say secret key just like this and now if I run this, then this is going to return password. And now if I want to grab a nested value, so say I wanted to grab the production AWS key, then I can say production and then AWS key as different arguments. And now if I run this, you can see it returns one, two, three. If I want to call development, then this is going to return the 456. So that is how you can use dig, not just for normal Ruby hashes, but you can also use them for outside data, such as YAML files.